Hey there, this is Dallin Seeger with Dallin Seeger Codes, and welcome to episode 3 of Making a DAW in C Sharp. In this episode, we're going to work with allowing a user to select the input and output device out of devices they may have attached to their computer, uh, and also start with creating a new application that we will be working with from here on out. In the last two episodes, uh, you may have seen me working from a application I'd already created. We're going to be creating a new one here. So here I am in just regular Visual Studio. Uh, we're going to uh, open the Create a New Project prompt, and we're going to be using Windows Forms. Uh, you're welcome to use uh, WPF as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You should just be able to adapt the syntax for whatever type of application you're making. All right, so we're actually going to be choosing uh, this one right here, Windows Forms App.NET Framework. This is slightly older than this one, but uh, a little more reliable. And let's go ahead and name this example da, or whatever you want to uh, name this. All right, so now we have our Windows Forms application open here. It went ahead and created the default form for us. And let's just go ahead and change the text. Just click on this, change the text to uh, whatever your program is called, so it reflects up there. Perfect. And let's go ahead and rename uh, this form one to, I guess, main, just so it's a little easier, and hit yes, a little easier for us to reference. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and open the toolbox now. Go into view. And let's go ahead and throw a button into our form. Sweet. And let's go ahead and name this button. All right, let's go ahead and set the text of this button to record and change the name up here so we can access it in our code as record button. And let's go ahead and do the same for a play button. All right, so we have our two buttons here and let's go ahead and create another form. Forms are basically like windows. So add form, go ahead and click add. All right, so we have another form here and let's go ahead and name this form IO settings. And I.O. typically means input, output. And again, go ahead and rename form one to I.O. Yes. And so this window will go ahead and deal with uh, setting a playback and a recording device. So here we have our main window and the I.O. window. So let's go ahead and add a combo box, which is basically just a drop down box. Let's add one here. And let's add two, uh, one for playback, one for recording. And then we'll go ahead and label these uh, respectively. All right, so now we have these labeled. Let's head back to our main form and let's go ahead and uh, access the code for this. So let's just go ahead and click on the record button and double click on the click within the event handler. And the uh, event handler section is this uh, lightning bolt. So then that will go ahead and open the code here and we have this uh, on click event and we can go ahead and work with this click event later. Uh, let's go ahead and have this because so this main form is going to open by default since it's the main the main form it's form one. Uh, let's go ahead and have the IO settings actually pop up with this as well so that the IO settings can uh, so the IO settings can be uh, configured right when you open the application. All right, and in order to get this open, we are going to want to make a reference to it. So let's just say, um, we can go ahead and make this static because we're only going to, going to want one instance of it. Just name this IO. And here in the main, we can go ahead and set IO to a new IO. And this line of code here uh, will actually go ahead and open up this form. All right, we're going to want to type IO.show, which will show the form. And let's go ahead and hit save all. And as we can see, this I.O. setting will appear. There's this these drop-down boxes with absolutely nothing. So we'll go ahead and uh, populate these combo boxes. All right, now let's go ahead and open up the code for this I.O. form we have here. You just go down to I.O. here. All right, now let's go ahead and create two static variables that will hold the integer for the recording device and the playback device. If you remember, they're stored as an integer. So we'll make a... All right, so we have these here. And let's go ahead in the constructor here. Let's go ahead and create a method let's call it load devices all right so we have this method here and we're going to start coding with n audio so we're going to want to add these usings uh, however it doesn't recognize it because we are going to need to add the nougat pa package real quick and the first one here just n audio go ahead and install this 
All right, so as we've discussed in the last two episodes, uh, re the recording and playback devices are going to be integers, so zero is typically going to be the default. Uh, if you have multiple, it would be zero, one, two, three, etc. All right, so let's go ahead and create a variable of type wave in capabilities. Uh, let's just name it device info. So wave in capabilities is going to give us information about a specific uh, audio device. Let's start with that input device. So in this case, we type wave in dot get capabilities and then the device number so let's do uh zero for the default device all right perfect so this wave in capabilities this will go ahead and give us information uh stored in this variable information about uh the audio device the default this case zero the default audio device or whatever audio device one two three whatever you put in here it will give information uh, what we need in this case is going to be the name so if we have zero in here uh, what if you have multiple uh, audio devices. So let's go ahead and take care of that now by creating a for loop. So let's go ahead and do for. Perfect. And uh, here we're going to do a uh, wave in dot device count. So this is going to, an audio will automatically go ahead and detect uh, what kind of input devices you have connected to your uh, system here. So it'll go ahead and loop. This will go ahead and loop through all of them. And we can move this here and go ahead and change the zero to I. So whatever so whichever audio device it's currently looping through, we'll go ahead and get that information for us. So we're going to want to go ahead and do this again for output. It's going to be the exact same thing. This time we just change, because remember we have wave in and wave out for input and output. Change this to wave out uh, get capabilities. And we will want to also change wave in capabilities to wave out capabilities. All right, so now we have access to all of these names of the devices connected to our computer. So let's go ahead and add the names to the drop-down menus, uh, drop-down combo boxes that we have here. So again, let's go ahead and create uh, these event handlers. And we're going to want the selected index changed event handler. So just double click on that. And we're going to want to repeat that step for the playback device. And let's go back to properties here and name these something more practical. Uh, this one is going to be the recording device drop-down. Drop down makes more sense to me than combo box. All right, so we have these event handlers here for the recording device drop down and the playback device drop down when you change the selected index. And we will actually work with that in just a second here. But here we're going to want to actually add stuff to select from the drop down boxes. So let's here in uh, the rec recording, so wave in, that'll be recording. So let's do uh, recording device drop down. Yep, there we go. So items.add device info. And we're going to want to actually specify product name as there are multiple pieces of capabilities or information you can get uh, with this here. All right, let's go ahead and repeat that down here. All right, so now these uh, drop-down boxes should go ahead and populate. We can actually go ahead and test this out real quick. Let's save all. All right, so as you can see, we have these two drop-downs here, and we have the uh, built-in microphone and built-in output device as well as the interface that I have plugged in right now. So we have two inputs here uh, so you could select between these inputs. All right so let's go ahead and tie uh, whatever device we have selected to these two static variables we have here. So let's just go ahead and actually set a default value for these. So let's set them to, just to zero um, when this is initialized which is when the application is open. All right, so we have these set to zero, and let's also go ahead and make sure that these uh, combo box dropdowns uh, reflect the default value. All right, so now these are going to reflect by default uh, the default value. And of course, when you are changing uh, the selected index, we are going to want to update these variables. So let's do according device int equals equal it to the selected index and do the same down here. All right, perfect. So now we have a device stored in these variables here. Now that we have these two variables here that store the recording device and the playback device, we can go ahead and start working with this record button from the information you learned in the last two episodes. Uh, we will go ahead and go over this on the next episode. However, you are welcome to, of course, work ahead with these two buttons here. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Dallin Seeger with Dallin Seeger Codes.